Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when you're in grade school. <laughs> so, uh, but there I learned um, all about the value of pharmaceuticals, um, the wealth of talent that remained in Jersey as a result uh, in life-saving drugs, um, as well as products that we use daily. Um, I worked in the Government Affairs External Relations um, Division uh, as an intern, and I also learned how to stuff envelopes. <laughs> uh, a lot of paper cuts to show for that. Uh, but it helps. It's a life skill, though. <laughs> it is a life skill. I still use it today. <laughs> I still use it today, absolutely. Uh, but it also just opened up a window of opportunity uh, coming from a public college in the state of New Jersey. Kane had a partnership uh, with Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, they were very supportive of student affairs, uh, which made New Jersey a better place to be uh, and also kept me in New Jersey. So I think that's important to note because that's the New Jersey that I know and love. Uh, that's the New Jersey that I fight for and uh, serve as a champion for daily. I have two children, a high school a junior as a son, and my daughter just went to college. Forensic psychology will be her major. Uh, so pray for me, pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's going well. Um, as hard as I tried to talk her out of it, it was headstrong into it, so I said I better embrace it. Um, the work that I do in Trenton, I was fortunate. Uh, when I entered the legislature, I entered as a focused individual and knew I wanted to be on the health committee. So for uh, my tenure in the legislature, I've served on the health committee. I see that um, Chairman Herb Conaway is going to be one of your honorees yes. at the upcoming event. Um, and I say Dr. Lawyer. Uh, Pilot. Pilot. <laughs> <laughs> he does it all and he's one of the brightest minds uh, in our state, if not the country. He has been great as far as moving with the fast-paced changes of healthcare, also working at a hospital. Um, I think that lends itself to following what's current um, at times, and on my hospital side, uh, it feels like New Jersey is overregulated. Uh, and I have a appreciation for it because I've only worked for for-profits. While Hackensack is a nonprofit, I'm a hybrid hospital that has a 80%, I'm sorry, 90% for profit owner and a 10% nonprofit owner. Uh, it's a non traditional model, but it's a model that kept the hospital open uh, that's now 125 years old. The community docs wanted to purchase it when Atlantic Health was actually selling it, couldn't put together the money. Uh, for it, so a for-profit entity out of Texas came in and bought it and they held true to their word. So standards are important to me, uh, but also realizing that sometimes the business community uh, can weigh in faster with more modern information that's relevant to make the change that needs to happen for protective factors. With that said, on the legislative side, uh, we've talked about everything from biosimilars last year uh, versus generic drugs, and you all lived through uh, those hearings. Uh, prescription cost, uh, I'm in behavioral health. Uh, one of the reasons for recidivism is, is compliance with medication management as well as affordability. So I believe drugs are good as far as keeping people healthy and able to sustain a lifestyle where they can live in the community. Um, we were just talking briefly about when they come off the drugs because we have long acting injectables now and you feel like, hey, I don't need that pill anymore. I don't wanna get that injection anymore because I'm good. Then they destabilize and then they come see me. And other hat, I like to treat people for tune-ups and help to get them well. That's the greatest joy that I have as a healthcare administrator to get them to where they need to be. On the converse side, we have uh, problems or challenges with cost, especially in today's economy, and then we had the EpiPen uh, issue that was surfaced uh, late this summer uh, where you took something that was a life-saving treatment and you ratcheted up the price so it became unaffordable. 
I'm not in love with the insurance industry. Trust me, being a behavioral health person, there are still disparities that are not fair. Um, there are still exorbitant out-of-network costs. Um, I can tell you that I talk to parents for children's specialized mental health treatment. The network capacity is limited. If a family goes out of network, they're charged up to $50,000 for a seven-day hospital stay for a child, and it's not fair. Where treatment can get them on the path to a sustainable lifestyle where the person of a child can build healthy coping mechanisms, but you're charging them $50,000 for a seven-day stay, and they had no options, and the insurance company's refusing to pay. Those are real stories. There are medication stories where uh, my mother-in-law has a cardiac issue. Uh, she has Medicare, she has gap insurance, but we still pay the difference of $130 for her prescriptions because she can't afford cost of living in addition to her life treating medication. So there are some concerns that we have. Do we want to stop research and development? that lead to better product outcomes, uh, that cost a premium to come up with, um, that can sustain people's quality of life? Absolutely not. My personal mission is to make sure that we grow those service lines, that we build upon those activities. Uh, you hear now uh, the state 